name is Dr. Martin Gorman. I practice in Encino, California, and I am the director of the uh, accredited Dental Sleep Medicine Center by the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine. And I'm here today with Sandra Belcou, a certified myofunctional therapist, and Dr. Zaghi, a ENT, advanced ENT specialist. And Sandra is going to give the introduction to Dr. Zaghi and how they met and how we got together. Sandra. Hi, uh, I'm Sandra Valgo Pinkerton and I'm a myofunctional therapist practicing in Encino, California. And I had the honor to meet Dr. Zaghi at UCLA uh, Medicine uh, of Sleep course, refreshing, refreshing course last December. And uh, actually, we were talking about uh, this great study published by the American Academy of Sleep uh, and uh, talking about the importance of myofunctional therapy in treating and curing sleep apnea and snoring. And thank you so much for having me, Dr. Berman. It's been a pleasure to be part of your group here. So, um, uh, as you know, I'm an ENT doctor and I did a uh, fellowship training at Stanford University. Uh, to specialize in snoring and sleep apnea. And it's with great fortune that I met you at that sleep medicine light. course because you actually had the article and yes. you were trying to show me this and I yes. pointed out that I was <laughs> one of the authors on this study. So it's really nice right. to be here. Nice. Uh, so nice. as you know, as one of the experts who does this therapy, myofunctional therapy is a program that you use right. to help improve the improper tongue functioning. Yes, to and the balance of the facial muscle and lips and tongue. Absolutely, absolutely. And so what we did, and that I'm very fortunate, is I'm part of a group at Stanford um, that focuses on doing research to better understand potential treatments for both snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. And so under the leadership of Dr. Mercario Camacho, we've done a bunch of meta-analysis and systematic reviews to see which therapies out there actually work. And we had a few specific uh, goals for the study. First of all, was to determine whether myofunctional therapy could be effective in treating sleep apnea by improving the apnea hypopnea index and the lowest oxygen saturation. We also wanted to see, does it improve snoring? Does it help with sleepiness? And most importantly, to evaluate the quality of the evidence in the support of this treatment. And we looked for studies evaluated among functional therapy as a treatment for sleep apnea in both children and adults. And what we did for this study is we only looked at studies with pre-treatment and post-treatment results from people who only underwent myofunctional therapy. The results actually were quite uh, surprisingly interesting. They showed that myofunctional therapy does improve sleep apnea, and it reduces the apnea hypopnea index by approximately 50% in adults and 62% in children. It also contributes to improvements in daytime sleepiness and snoring. And it was interesting that it was shown effective in children and adults of all ages. The youngest page in the series was three years old. Um, the oldest was 60 years old. And even more interesting, uh, we found an article that discussed the important role in preventing relapse. And so I want to talk to you a little bit more about relapse. So the studies that we looked at specifically looked at myofunctional therapy alone to treat obstructive sleep apnea. But there was one study by Dr. Uh, Guillaume Nau that actually took 24 children with sleep disordered breathing who were cured of the sleep disordered breathing after they had their tonsils removed or they had orthodontia to expand their mandible. And they referred all 24 patients for myofunctional therapy. There were 11 patients who completed the therapy, and there were 13 patients who decided not to pursue not it. To. Among the 11 who pursued the therapy and completed it, they had an average AHI of 0 0.5 after three years. That means that they, Quite rem impressive. they remained cured yes. after the surgery. And then among the 13 who did not, they actually showed a mild but significant relapse with an average AHI of 5.3. And this is very interesting because it shows the important role myofunctional therapy has not only in treating sleep apnea, but in preventing the relapse right. once they're cured. Now the question that remains for us that, that, that's unknown is this does work, but what I come here for you guys is to better understand how does it work, by what mechanism, and so I'd love to hear more from, from your perspective on what the therapy is and how it works. That's great information you've shared with us today. And it, it's really great to see the correlation of the science with our hands-on that we see here every day in our practice. And um, one of the things that I see is that, and I think the reason of the study with 0 0.5, the people went through therapy and then it was so much higher in uh, the people that did not do uh, myofunctional, is that when the, the oral muscles are working correctly, that's your retention. The tongue and the lips and the cheeks, 
that keeps the teeth and the jaws in the right position.